adventurers. Thank you so much for joining us here on this adventure hour. I am so excited for today. Uh, let's give you a little bit of a look-see into our adventure for today. We are doing Deathworks Training Day. Brisbane is a lot weirder than you think it is. And you thought you knew it all. You're a pomp, short for psychopomp, which means you help souls into the afterlife. Well, you're supposed to. See, it's your first day on the job and the big lady herself is giving you your training. You're in for an adventure when you realise that it's not just about sending souls to the afterlife. You'll face stirrets, undead dinosaurs and see the underworld itself. And whether you stick with the job or not, your idea of the city will never be the same again. Training Day is a spin-off from Trent Jameson's Deathworks stories, of which there have been three novels so far, all of them set in Brisbane and published through Orbit Books. So we are joined here today by the aforementioned Trent Jameson. Thank you so much, Trent, for joining us. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Brett. Uh, I think actually I got that wrong. I think there's four novels in the Deathworks series now, is, right? Well, there's three novels and a novella, um, so yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of a novel length. Um, yeah, the, the fourth one, and then there is this training day that sort of sits in between the the the, no, the, the novels and the, the novella. So, um, so what you're telling us is that this this adventure through Brisbane is like literally part of the canon of the actual series. It is indeed. It is indeed. And so uh, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was fun to do this because, it, it, you know, being said, the, the novels are set in Brisbane and this is such a, it was such a location sort of specific series. Um, it was great to actually do something where people could actually enter the, the world of the books. Love it so much. Uh, can I get people to maybe get like a little bio from you just to, just about who you are, what you do? Okay, well, I'm a writer and a bookseller. I work at Avid Reader Bookshop in West End um, and I write fantasy novels for adults and my latest book was this one, The Stone Road. Oh, that's a beautiful a, cover. It's kind of a dystopian kind of rural fantasy set in a kind of a dystopian Australian-like place. Um and I also write picture books as well. I had a book out called The Giant in the Sea. You can see a, the Korean version is just where? The cool. In the Kai. And I have a new picture book coming out in June called Mr. And Poppable. Nice. Oh. And, uh, that's the Poppatron <laughs> Mega Burst of 3000. Perfect. The ultimate balloon popping machine. Um, so, yeah, I, I do a few different things. And I write short fiction as well. So did you that. did you say the ultimate balloon popping machine? Yes. Well, look well, at that thing. Was, Spikes everywhere. It, it's <laughs> incredible. It's it's a, a picture book about a, a impoppable balloon person called Mr. Impoppable, and he owns a chocolate shop. And and one day Gerald walks in, and Gerald is the world's balloon popping champion. And they basically um, have a bet to see whether or not he can pop him. Uh, Mr. Impoppable. So it escalates, but it's also about a, a developing friendship. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's an extremely silly book, but it's quite beautiful. The illustrator, Brent Wilson, has done an incredible job. It has, um, so it, it, the, the illustrations are quite sort of old school, but sort of contemporary. So if you like Chuck Jones and, and sort of Warner Brothers cartoons and, and like sort of earlier sort of 50s era um picture books then these illustrations really will talk to you it's it's a beautiful work of um pop art <laughs> i love it i love it so much um so those of you who are joining us will also notice that our setup is slightly different this week um our uh, lovely twitch guest star platform does not play well with max uh, so we have decided to jump over to StreamYard, and honestly, it's been quite delightful using StreamYard, so I think that we're going to continue to do so. Um, but uh, one thing that I will say is that even in StreamYard, we can still share our screen so we can go armchair travelling. Oh, yeah. 
All right. Well, let us dive into this adventure. We are once again in Brisbane this week. We are going to be armchair travelling around. Uh, for those of you who have never been to Brisbane, it is on the beautiful Brisbane River uh, and its kind of central business district is uh is is kind of uh centered in and around this lovely Redcliffe place. So it has these kind of funky oh, I'm back. Yeah, right, right. Yes. <laughs> so it has all these funky kind of uh uh cubes, one of which is like the library over here. Yeah. Um it's got uh this is the Brisbane City Council uh building very this kind of architecture going on there. Uh, and then the there are these all of these steam balls kind of scattered around. Uh, so these big giant silver balls that look like they've got little like steamers, like little like vegetable steamers in them. Um, and so this is kind of the setting of our start of our story right opposite the beautiful Treasury Casino, um, lovely stand, sandstone, old, see my inverted commas here, building um in uh in 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 brisbane here so i i love that uh library it's uh it kind of looks mm -hmm. like it's, it's a mixture of lego and brutalism combined it's just i i, I don't know yeah it, it's the, like the, thing. the thing that's really cool i think is the windows because when you're inside and you see those windows from the inside it's a bit trippy it is it is Mm -hmm. um, and, but I think that these aren't actually solid, these panels. Like, so when you look from inside, I'm pretty sure that these are also kind of like slightly see-through as well so that you can kind of see through them, isn't, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, all right. So we are uh, here in Brisbane. We are a pomp, short for psychopomp, and we are about to take an adventure through Brisbane City as the Apprentice of Death. Um, so Trent, do you want to take part in the, uh, voice acting side of things as well? Would you like to attempt to do some characters? Oh, I think I might avoid it if you don't mind. That's it's, okay. It's cold. And I'm, I'm <laughs> terrible. That's all right. Uh, you can, you can help I'll, I'll argue the choices. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds good. Um, so Brett and I will probably trade off doing some narration. Uh, do you want to start, Brett? Sure. Awesome. Let's do this. You're nervous, and you should be. This is your first day on the job. Not just any job. You're a psychopomp. Pomp, for short. You help souls take the leap into the afterlife. You're their guide and the doorway to the underworld. Pomp is a noun and a verb. A pomp is what you are, and pomping is what you do. You're death's assistant, one of many, and hey, if you play your cards right, you might become Australia's death one day. It's not impossible. You've read up on the job. First, there was Mr. D, and then Stephen, and now Lissa. Three different deaths in a matter of a few years, and you're ambitious. The sky's the limit. Well, if you pass the trial, that is. The last few days have been a blur. You've been to orientation, you've read the shiny prospectus, seen a heap of training videos, and now here you are. Someone was supposed to meet you, but here you are, still by yourself. Oh, well, there's always that accountant job you have lined up. Always have a backup. That's your philosophy. It's just this one seemed so much more interesting. There's a prickle of sweat beneath your deodorant. You don't like waiting. It's only making you more nervous. You're standing by the steam ball, and you've noticed a hole in its structure. You hear a whisper. You peer down. There's a pair of fierce almond-shaped eyes, like something out of a Modigliani painting, looking at you. Hello? Someone says. Can you hear me? You opened your mouth to speak. Oh, dear. Says the voice in the sphere. There's a flash, and the eyes are gone. You take a step back and almost bump into someone. There you are. A voice says coldly. You jump and turn, and it's like a cloud has passed over the sun. The temperature drops. You fail to suppress a shiver. You knew someone was going to walk you through the job, but you didn't expect the boss. The big boss. Miss Jones, death herself, to be teaching you. Death is dressed in black. A 50s-style Mickey Mouse brooch on one lapel of her jacket. Mickey looks like a little manic. 
death, anything but. You're trying to remember all the topics of conversation people told you to avoid when talking to death. Don't talk about the recent war. Don't talk about the last death and what became of them. And never, ever slag off Walt Disney cartoons. Her green eyes consider you, and you feel you come up wanting. But she smiles nonetheless, and that grin is almost warm. You know, I used to train pomps before I became regional manager. I like to keep my hand in. Thank you? You hope you, hope, you sound... <laughs> you hope you sound thankful. Her lips thin. Don't thank me yet. But then she grins. You're early. She says. I like that in an employee. You don't know what to say. This is the first time you've ever had to speak to death. The person who did your interview for Mortmax was more like your average HR manager, really. A bit scary, a bit reassuring, and a bit distant. Maybe you didn't think things through, but the money's good. Yep, it's really good. Thank you, madam. You say? She rolls her eyes. Please, call me Lissa. She reaches out a hand and you shake it. Her grip is cold, colder than the winds that blow down George Street. I take a personal interest in all my pomps. I need to know that they're going to work out. She lets go of your hand and smiles. When death smiles, you can't help but shiver. Besides, we have had a few issues lately. A year ago, there was a, a war between Earth and Hell, a, a rift torn open, and a, a dark god destroyed. It's kind of mucked with the business. Things aren't quite what they used to be. For one, well, the walls between our world and hell have thinned. What do you mean by that? You ask? Alyssa <laughs>, laughs. I, I, I mean, you're going to have to work for your money. It's not like the old days, not even the recent ones, but I'm sure you'll be fine. She points across the road at Victoria Bridge. We can go that way, she says. Or onto Queen Street Mall. Victoria Bridge will lead to art and some thinning, which is always trouble, why death is itself an art. And I can sense a soul up ahead in the mall. You choose. Shopping or art. <laughs> mm -hmm. Art. art. Mm. So is the, I'm wondering if this is the mall, this soul ahead, is this a soul that needs to be shown the way to the afterlife? Is this like one our, our first potential Correct. true gig if we head to the mall? Correct. So, the, so the mall is the first potential true gig. Mm -hmm. As opposed to. Um, as opposed to some thinning, um, uh, which uh is, is essentially linked to the trouble with the war. So we could be doing a bit of war cleanup or we could be going like direct for the everyday job. Mm. Well, certainly uh, the idea of going to see this like fundamental issue in, in reality seems like uh, the more interesting path. Um, but as a like first day on the job, aiming to impress kind of employee, um, it seems like, going for your first soul reaping or whatever soul <laughs> pomping going for your first pomp might be the like the, <laughs> the wise choice um yeah sounds like you're leaning towards going to pomp your first soul well you know what i feel like during these adventures i tend to go with the the one that makes most sense to me where mm -hmm. like where i would thematically and, and story-wise this is a go-getter person he would want to like get go step by step but personally i'm more interested in in dealing with the actual this this rift in reality sounds way cooler to me oh all right all right let's do that then let's go do some rift in reality work i love it all right so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we are going to victoria bridge so we are literally actually going to be uh, heading out kind of onto where the, where the bridge is right now. So let's yeah, kind of drop ourselves like here. 
There we, there we go. So for uh, so those of you listening to the podcast afterwards, uh, we're kind of on um, the bridge over the Brisbane River. Um, so to one side we have the CBD with all of its very tall skyscrapers and highly reflective uh, uh, glass and, and all of those kind of fun things. And then on the other side is uh, South Bank, which we toured around a couple of weeks back with the Brisbane Eye. Uh, the the QPAC Theatre uh, and then the uh, State Library of Queensland over there with all of the beautiful kind of uh, trees along the river walk. So this is kind of where we find ourselves looking out over Brisbane. Um, that beautiful and, brown uh, water. <laughs> that beautiful, beautiful brown water. Exactly, a hundred percent. All right, so. Uh, and I said going any to... sarcasm because I actually really love ha having a brown water. <laughs> a lot of country rivers. Um, brown brown water is fine. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, oh, we've got some creepy artwork going on here as well. Mm. This, bodes, this bodes well. Okay, so. She stops you just past the pedestrian crossing. The casino is behind you, tourists snapping photos of the river and the city behind you. There's a cold wind blowing down the river. Buses pass you by, rumbling and grumbling across the bridge. A crow is flying overhead, the tips of its wings feeling at the air like fingers. And you wonder if it is one of her helpers. There's a lot of walking in this job. You sit, she says. If you're a pomp, you'll always be on the ground finding souls. Obviously, these days will text you the locations, and your phone's GPS, global pomping service, is highly accurate. But none of that means you can avoid walking. Walk a city, and you'll learn to love it. Learn to love it, and its people and you will be a compassionate pomp. And that's what I want. That's what I expect. She gestures at the Brisbane Square Library and Council Building to the left of you, and then at the Cultural Centre across the river. This is a great living, breathing city, which means there is always work for us. Where there's life, there's lots of death. You must look a little daunted because she pats your arm. Sorry if I gave you a hard time back there. I just didn't want you to quit. Everyone has their first day on the job. She says. Even me. And you're doing fine. You try and imagine her just starting out. I thought death was eternal. You say. You know she wasn't the first, not by a long shot. But you can't help wondering why. That never came up in your reading. Lissa smiles. Of course, death is eternal. Death, the incarnation, I'd guess you call it. Not so much. For one, there's 13 of us spread throughout the world. 13 regional managers. I'm Australia's death. I wasn't always. Once, I used to be a pomp like you. She gives you a smile and a duck. Ducks get stare. Don't get any ideas. I have no intention of retiring for a century or two. She sighs. I can feel some death along the river, not to mention other curious things. I want you to direct this day, though. Where do you feel we need to go? You can sense something just at the art gallery forecourt. It feels cold and dark and it is waiting for you. Maybe it's time to get to business. Another force is drawing you towards the footpath beneath the bridge on the South Bank side. Less menace there, but something's not right about it either. Do you follow your inclination towards the art gallery forecourt just before the bending black sculpture known as Offshoot? Or do you cross the bridge turning right at the base and left so you're almost under the bridge near the light post mm. so we've got two kind of senses one is that kind of weird force that's kind of drawing you 
Uh, and then another one is less menacing, but it's also not drawing you, which like, I don't know, like how much kind of like mind psychological plays is going on in these like forces that you feel, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you need to be wary of things that feel like they're. Yeah, I, I'm definitely in a go big or go home mood. So let's let's go. For, I would say let's go to that <laughs> drawing force. Do you do you do you do you have any uh, thoughts uh, thoughts around that at all, Trent? I, I'm with Brett on this one. I think uh, <laughs> go I think hard or go home. home. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, let's see if the um. We're gonna see whether Street View lets us get close enough to that sculpture so that's putting us under what about over here because this is the one we're after right yes yes okay i wonder if we can get it better because that looks like it goes under oh yes excellent beautiful yeah. there we go very nice uh, uh, that's our sculpture beautiful I'm not sure how much you're, uh, Emily, you're feeling the character that I gave Lissa, the, like, very deliberate, slow-spoken. Mm -hmm, like, dark, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, like okay. That. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Um, and actually, we... it, isn't, it isn't that sculpture. It's no. other um, And I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It, it kind of floats up there. It's a... Quite yeah, kind of it's, in, it's in this corner over here, isn't it? It, it is, it is. Mm, can I get closer to it? That's the question. We've got this lovely illustration of it here. I don't know if everyone can see that. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah, that is visible on the stream, yeah. Mm. Let's try and see if we can get close enough to it in the street view. So essentially where we are is in the forecourt of the art gallery. Um, and so there is a, a kind of upper head, um, this beautiful kind of sculpture made out of a bunch of different hanging wires that kind of look like this, um, like a futuristic kind of spaceship made out of blocks and bricks almost. Mm. Uh, but I don't know if we can actually get close enough to it in the street view because it's not necessarily on a road. So, um, speaking of uh, yeah. spaceship stuff, do you guys hear about the Starship launch this morning? The, the test flight? No. So this massive rocket that's essentially the size of a building that lifted off uh, that SpaceX did this morning. I like every time I watch these, the new eventful launches of these things, I, I almost break out into tears. There's such a cool thing that we're accomplishing as as mankind taking next steps into space and that sort of thing so incredible definitely um uh all right we can't get it close enough to that sculpture that's okay we'll look yeah, at this other we'll, we'll we'll look at the other pretty little black sculpture instead all right brett take us away the sculpture called offshoot is right next to you it bends its bends draw the eye you feel like you could be looking at some dark, ultra-flexible Gumby. The flags ah, flutter so beneath the suspended art nearby. Oh, maybe, maybe it's no longer there. Hmm. Hmm. How sad. How sad. Well, Brisbane's going through a lot of changes at the moment. So uh, mm -hmm. with the Olympic Games coming up and... That's true. All right. Channeling a dead Lissa. Death, Lissa. <laughs> the river's all sticks-ish today. Things are bubbling from it. The dead are restless. Mm. Just another day at the office for us. Oh, I have the wrong one. Apologies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hold on. Hold on. There's a lot of energy on this side of the river. Lissa says. Creative energy. The buses flowing into and out of the city. Wherever there is so much motion and thought, there are thinnings, portals to the land of the dead. 
Can you feel it? You nod, and the air crackles with it. Not good. Not good. Lissa says. Both sculptures are still, and yet full of motion. Life and death, two states, just like Lissa. Look back at the city, Lissa says. It's still hard to believe that a battle for all life on Earth was fought here. We won, but I lost something and someone dear to me. We all did. She grabs your warm hand in her cold one. Are you ready for that sort of sacrifice? I don't know. You say? Lissa smiles. Good answer. She says. You won't know until it happens. The sculpture stirs and it starts to rumble. Lissa shakes her head. I've not heard of this before. She says. Usually it's inklings that come to life, but in this new thinning world it seems that... The sculpture's knocked her away a good three meters to your right. She's already starting to get up. Just how strong is this woman? But she won't be fast enough to save you. You tug free of the silver knife from your you tug free the silver knife from your belt. It's a puny weapon, but it's all you've got. And then you remember a pomp's strength is in their blood. You slide the knife across your palm. Blood flows. You run screaming towards the statue. It swings at you. You duck, slapping your body hand against its belly. The sculpture shudders and is still. There's a flash of movement in the corner of your eye. The suspended sculpture is suspended no more, and it is swooping towards you. It hisses and wraps its metallic wings around you, and that's when it makes its mistake. Its body is open to you. You touch its cold belly with your palm. The art becomes a tangle of wires that you free yourself from at once. Good work, says Lissa, looking for all the world like nothing had even touched her. Your blood will always get you out of trouble. She gives the sculpture a bit of a kick. This isn't good. She says again. Not good at all. Damn thinnings. She looks at your hand and sighs, then touches your fingers gently. There's a soft, cool sensation that runs from fingertip to palm, and the wound heals. Only the scar remains, and it isn't neat. The problem is, sometimes there isn't enough blood in all the world. Now... Lissa says. Here, we can go down to the river or go towards Goma and the Bondi tree. I feel things happening in both places. Trouble, no doubt, at both. But I think the source of the thinning is near the body tree. My, for a first day, you're spoiled for choice. All right, so are we going to the Bodhi tree in search of trouble and more thinning? Or are we going to the river uh, to the more safe choice? Yes. Well, uh, but but I, I, I realize what's happened to that flying sculpture now. We've already dealt with it. That's why it's not yeah, there exactly. anymore. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it, it was expensive to, to have that happen, but um, no. <laughs> well, then I, I actually have to go and restring it each time. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not right on the top of a ladder either. But anyway, <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah, it's all worth it. Exactly. I mean, like that was exciting though. Taking out a Gumby statue, like hmm. <clears throat> who doesn't want to do that, right? Do you know what Gumby is, Brett? Like Gumby, the tall, stretchy. Yeah, character that yeah. has the little dog. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think we had Gumby as like toys here in Canada, and I uh, can't remember if we there was like a stop motion TV show or something. Sure was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, are we going in search of more trouble? Seems like we really dealt with that trouble with uh, without too much uh, damage. So apparently we have a, a really ugly scar on our hands now. It seems like if, if just a simple thing like that and uh, causes some really intense scarring, I expect we're going to be uh, uh, have a lot of scars by the end of this. But, you know, I think maybe that's just part of the job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hear that you're supposed to be dashing when you have scars, right? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll leave Trent behind to restring the um, sculpture back up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we will head to the highway sign and the, uh, is it is it Bodhi? Bod, body? Body tree? I think it's Bodhi. I would say Bodhi, Bodhi yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so that's going to be behind us. Um, in, near the state library, so let's see how close we can get to it. Oh, up high, it's mm. fun. Uh, we don't want to be that high up. So it's but... in, it's basically just on the left hand side of the of Goma. So... Yeah, so he's just here. This this cool little oh, sign in there. Well, that's the tree. And then, so that's our that's our tree and that's our sign. So I wonder if this guy will take us in there. What about this guy? How about this one? I have to say I'm quite impressed with your navigation. Right? I got yes. this. I got this. All right. Well, this is as close as we're getting to it, everyone. Uh, mm. So we have come in around, we've come <clears throat> in from the river, we've gone around past the art gallery, we've gone behind the State Library of Queensland, um, which the walls are all kind of like covered in um, writing. Actually, let's, let's take a look at the lovely State Library of Queensland because it's actually a very nice, it, it's, very it's nice, nice building. Uh, if we can get in close enough. There we go. No, too close. Um, this one. Too far. Oh, well, we're surrounded by a lot of beautiful fig trees, which is why we can't get in close enough to the State Library of Queensland. That's okay. Um, but then we are by this, uh, this, this uh, beautiful old tree um, in, in amongst the, the art gallery and the State Library. And then there's this kind of cool retro motel sign which is called the High Surf Motel, um, which is where we have we have ended up um, here uh, to figure out what is going on um, with the uh, thinning situation. Take it away, Brett. Am I? Are you? I oh, that's I me. You're, you're right. Me, yeah. You're right. It is me. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 me. I'm sorry, I could go on like this forever, but I won't. Um, okay. Uh, so I really love the description. So uh, with with all of these stories, they have associated music and, and audio narration to them when you do them in the real in the real world when you're walking around Brisbane. And so uh, Christopher Healy, who we had on a couple of weeks ago, did the, the music for this particular story. Um, and uh, and so Trent, like, tries to guide, like, what he's kind of imagining in the music. Um, and in this one, he's described it as something mysterious and moody, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which I very much enjoy. It's a scope um, there, isn't it? <laughs> is like he's giving him free reign basically um okay the high hotel sign glows a kind of blood smudge sunset brown there's a soul standing there looking forlorn i wanted a little more he says he looks around 90 a spry sort of 90 there's a twinkle in his eye just think about what's on the... Oh, wait, it's me. It's me. <laughs> Just think about what's on the other side. You say. Do you know? He asks. And then there's a flash before you. A cherub. It has to be a cherub. Darts past. Hello. Hello. Uh, <laughs> whoa, we're about to have a dog flip out. One sec here. Uh... Oh, the joys of live streaming with roommates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, where are we here? Uh, so uh, he says, do you know him? A cherub has suddenly appeared. Okay, I uh, asked the cherub. Sorry. <laughs> he yells and he nearly takes you out. 
There's far too much cherub buttock flying past. You and the old soul look at each other, and both of you laugh. The dead aren't all bad. Things are already getting more interesting. The soul says. You <laughs> smile. Well, that's not the half of it, but it's awesome. He flashes you a grin. You touch his arm and his soul passes through you. It hurts just a little, more an ache than anything else. But you guess it should. There's a deep sense of calm that flows through you. You can feel his soul entering the underworld. He seems happy. It seems right. Lissa smiles, pats your arm. Good work. She says. Not your first dead person, but your first real pomp. You feel a sense of triumph. The cherub flutters before you. It's the weirdest looking cherub you've ever seen. There's a smirk to it that's most uncherubic. Its eyes are shaped like almonds and it's smiling. You just wish it was wearing pants. You again. It says, and you remember where you saw it last. Those eyes staring at you from the hole in the sphere. Yes. You say... You shouldn't be here, Wall. Lissa says. What? Wall says. This isn't hell? This is an inkling. Lissa says. Not just an inkling, surely? Inklings are tattoos come to life. You've heard of Wall. You know who this is. It was my partner's inkling. Lissa says, as if there was any doubt. Steve's. Inkling. The one you're not supposed to talk about. I still am, aren't I? Lissa's face grows hard. You shouldn't be here. Why? Where's Stephen? He's not here anymore. Oh. Well says. Well, I shouldn't be here. He hangs his head mournfully. You want to give him a reassuring pat on the back, but... All of a sudden, you can feel a disturbance somewhere, and it feels big. Um, guys? You say, there's a distant roaring coming from Grey Street, a sound out of time. Lissa frowns. There is a thinness here. The underworld is close, and damn it, we need to get to the dinosaurs on Grey Street. Dinosaurs? This job keeps getting more bizarre. There's a source of thinness in Grey Street. And all of a sudden it's ripped bigger. This is going to be dangerous. But if we do it right, we might just halt something worse from happening. Worse? We call them regional apocalypses. We have to run. No time to think. You dash after Wall and Death onto Grey Street and the dinosaurs. Hopefully, they're not hungry. Ooh. Don't get a choice here, everybody. (laughs) We are off to get us some dinosaurs. Off to the Queensland Museum. Love it. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. All right, where are we here? Round, 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 round. There they are. All right, so we've gone up to behind the Queensland Museum. A very inconsiderate St. Peter's Lutheran bus is in front of our dinosaur. What is it doing? Not impressed. Get out of the way, you stupid bus. Let's see if we can get into one of the photospheres in here. Maybe Maybe that'll get us in closer to these dinosaurs. Come on. Oh, no, apparently these photospheres are imaginary. Mm. Boo. Okay. All right, well, we can kind of see kind of see our dino right here. All right. Was there yes. a photosphere on the other side of the street? No, there wasn't. I thought I saw oh, that. Oh, yeah. There we go. No. All right. Psych. Enough. Psych. <laughs> Like, all right, we'll just we'll just zoom in on them. We've got ourselves a triceratops. We've got ourselves a, a T Rex. So I, I think someone's like so, someone's blanked out the face of the T Rex, <laughs> <laughs> just no. for like shits and giggles. It's like 
<laughs> yeah, let's let's use the face blurring mechanism to blur out this T Rex. He needs his privacy. <laughs> um, I adore these dinosaurs. I, I take my kids to them all the time. Um, I mean, they're, they're wildly inaccurate, and part of the point of them is to show how uh, our perception of dinosaurs has changed a lot. Um, but yeah, they're, they're absolutely fantastic. Oh, I love them so very, very much. Um, so, uh, yeah, so for those of you who are hearing this on the podcast, we are by the Queensland Museum. There's kind of like a cut-in area to this very big, blocky um, building that doesn't have a lot going on, on the outside, but there's this kind of like lush garden area full of ferns and with a giant-ass bus in front of it. Um, and then we have this, this triceratops and this, this, this T-Rex um, that are hanging out there. And I think that, like, honestly, when they first put them in, they were, like, scientifically accurate. But now like, <laughs> with all of the things that's come in, I'm sure that they've, like, updated the signs to be, like, this is yeah, not. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> um, so we actually have two images uh, for this guy. So we have uh, not only this T-Rex here, but in this beautiful zoomed up T-Rex face. Um, which I which I love as a as a piece as well. Take it away, Brett. You're here on Gray Street. You swear the T Rex winks at you. You turn to Wall and he shrugs. These damn things, Lissa says. Any thinner and half of hell is good. Oh, oh no, that's uh, still me. Uh, oh, I see. These damn things, Lissa yeah. says. These damn thinnings, Lissa, Lissa says. says. Yeah. Any thinner, and half of hell is going to come rushing through. There's a dim roar that grows in intensity. The T-Rex's head turns towards you, and it looks hungry. Starving, in fact. It bounds towards you, head low, and its great skull strikes the glass. The thick plates crack, but hold. It shakes its head, confused, and then grunts. The Triceratops has smashed its way into its belly. They're a tangle of reptilian rage. T-Rex and Triceratops biting and snarling. They're much faster than you expected. The earth shudders with their combat. T-Rex gets in a good bit around the neck, but old Triceratops shakes it off and goes for a goring. <laughs> They're not really dinosaurs, Wall says, whispering into your ear. They're dead creatures inhabiting dinosaurs and making mischief. Enough, Lisa says. Enough. The dinosaurs stop. This isn't the underworld. You don't belong here. She says. Go. Instead, they charge at the glass and it begins to break. Another blow and it will shatter completely. Give me some blood. Wall says. <laughs> you look at him. I need blood. Your blood. It should be powerful <laughs> enough. Even if this is your first day. You do have a knife. Don't you? You nod and run the knife along your hand and bleed again. Wall grabs your hand, covering his own with blood. Yes, there's a power all right, thank you. He says. Shave our time together was so brief. Then he flies up and over the glass and straight at the T-Rex. There's a burst of light, a roaring of energies, and then Wall and the dinosaurs are gone. Lissa walks up to the glass and peers through. Well, appears to have stopped the thinning here. Nice to see he could be so useful. She does not look happy. That was very brave of him. You say. Blood's dripping down your fingertips, but you don't want to make a fuss. Lissa's lips thin. It was. So much like his master in that way. Nearly as annoying. Stephen was... Her voice trails off. You know things didn't end well. You don't push it. Lissa looks back at the glass and the crack that veins it and shakes her head. Not our problem. She mumbles to herself. Can only do so much. And then she seems to notice you for the first time. She grabs your hand. Uh, look, you're bleeding. I can do something about that. Don't move. Her hand is icy. But as she touches you, you feel the flesh heal. The pain in your hand fades. You've two pink scars there. 
Well, on the way to Cicatrix City. She says. And the day's not done. People never stop dying. She says. I think a visit to South Bank is in order. There's at least one soul there. We can go via the river or head straight to the ABC building. Uh, so, do you? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Go. Sorry. Continue. Do you go off to the river to Victoria Bridge? Uh, surely there's nothing but a lovely view there. Or head to the ABC building uh, and see what's up. So what do we want to do? So we're we're feeling we're feeling a. Uh, we're feeling a soul in both places, it seems. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, we, we, we're kind of like taking different routes there in a way. I like the ominous tag that says, surely there's, the, there's nothing but a lovely view there. <laughs> um, that's very tempting. <laughs> you're, um, you're tempted by the, by the danger? Tempted by this, this, the mystery of danger, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think so. <laughs> you've got a taste for it you're like i've taken on dinosaurs mm-hmm. i've gotten my first mm-hmm. soul i've i've kicked the ass out of gumby and his flying little sculpture i'm i'm ready i'm ready for whatever's on this bridge there's uh i don't know if you guys have heard of the an anime that's been popular recently called attack on titan mm-hmm. I um have. and uh one of the characters uh, enables their powers by through this sort of like self harm that that happens in this uh, this where the guy like cuts his hand and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So that actually is like one of the activations to one of the characters' powers in Attack on Titan as well. It's always an interesting mm-hmm. like it's such a uh, what's the word? I don't know. Metaphor is not quite the word, but it's it's very like it's it's evocative. <laughs> that to like to get something done, you need to sacrifice a part of yourself, and you need to be ready to to bear the pain and like all those little elements that go with like you're someone who needs to get things done. Yeah, this is how we do it. Um, yes. Uh, can I can I ask? Did I say that correctly, Trent? Is it Cicatrix City? Yes, it is. It okay, is. that's that's mm. the scars on the hand. Once they've been doing it for a long time, they're, they're very scarred. Um, and yeah, I really wanted like a very physical manifestation for their work, and um, yeah, nice. and so a little bit yeah unsettling as well. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to court death under the footpath. Let's see if how close we can get with our uh, with our street view, shall we? I reckon if we actually sit on this little guy here, we should be able to. Oh, yeah, look at this. There mm. we are. Nice, beautiful under the river scene. So we're under the uh, the Victoria Bridge. There's a, you know, kind of like a cobblestone effect going on here with river stones. And there's a bicycle path that we're currently standing in the middle of. Hopefully, not going to get run over. Uh, and then just some beautiful trees along the Brisbane River. Just. <laughs> nice pleasant a good hideaway from the beating heat of the brisbane sun um uh, right down here Mm -hmm. very beautiful all right let us go to the base okay Lissa signals for you to stop. Just past the bridge, it curves above you. But it's the river that is drawing your attention. The river's all stickish today. Things are bubbling from it. The dead are restless. She says. Just another day at the office for us. You can see hands lifting out of the water. One of them waves at you. I wouldn't get too close. Lissa says. The water belongs to something else. I have little power here. But there's something hypnotic about the waving. You walk towards it. Closer and closer. You find yourself on the water's edge. The hand reaches out and grabs you. It's surprisingly dry and warm. Do you let it pull you in? The water's starting to look very nice. Or... Do you fight it, resisting the siren call with every muscle? Brett? 
I mean, uh, <laughs> obviously <laughs> number two. <laughs> um, I mean, you never know, it. man. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> the water looks nice. No, we're resisting. I'm not, okay. I think I think we've been given ample warning not to uh, jump into the river of death. Yeah. <laughs> you struggle and the hand yanks harder. And then you realize that Lissa is pulling you by the other hand. You feel like you could be yanked in two. You kick out at the pale, dead hand once, twice, and then it lets you go. You fall back on the rocky shore, panting. I told you not to go near the water. You're a pump. The dead are drawn to you. And you can never completely trust the dead. No matter, you didn't succumb to its draw in the end. Now... There's something happening at the City Cat stop, but there's also an oddity near the ABC News clicker. Hmm. So there's two odd things. Mm. Two odd, two odd things. There's something happening, and then there's an oddity. I feel like we've been like the the theme of of today has been we're going towards the something's happening mm-hmm. kind of things, right? Okay, so something's happening at City Cat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm in with it. That's the the action oriented uh, route that we've been going with. So. All right, let's do this. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. City Cat, stop! I have to say this this series has a lot of public transport in it. Um, <laughs> that's why I had to use the City Cat. So the city cat is uh, the ferry that kind of goes along the Brisbane River. It's probably sometimes it feels it felt well at least when 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 kind of trying to move around Brisbane. Sometimes it felt like a very inefficient way of like getting around the city. But then the bridges are quite far apart, surprisingly. So I don't know, it's quite a pretty way of traveling around too, particularly in the evening. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Um, okay, is it this city cat stop that's by the note? We've gone we yeah. go past the wheel and we keep going south. Yeah, it's a little, little further on. Yeah. Oh, there we are, South Bank Ferry Terminal. That's oh, so we so we've gone along the edge of the river, past the wheel of Brisbane, and we are now at a series of pontoons that kind of come off the main walk. And so behind us, we have this beautiful rainforest area. It's got a lot of little rainforest walks in and around behind mm-hmm. it. And then the city cat has these kind of floating pontoons that can move up and down with the river. Um, interestingly, when they had the massive flood in 2010, yes. um, 2011. the river... 2011, the river got so high that these pontoons just ripped straight off and went down the river. Wow. Yeah. So, like, you can see that the the pontoons go, like, three or four metres up. They kind of just went all the way up, over, and off they floated. Wow. Um, To the point that uh, so there's a a massive bridge that's kind of further south um, called the Gateway Bridge, which links the Gold Coast and Brisbane, um, and uh, and it's quite large. It was meant to be kind of like large enough to kind of fit small like cruiser ships under and stuff. Um, and there were several boats and big steamships that got like just ripped down the river, and they were afraid it was going to take out one of the 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 pont the the, the legs of the bridge. And so um, a bunch of like really brave people got into their boats and reoriented the boat so that it would pass through the through the the pillars rather than taking them out. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So very interesting flood history mm. uh, here. But we have gone to the City Cat Stop. Um, oh, looks like there's more bloodletting to come. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there is a presence by the city cat. You feel it as you approach. This isn't a dead person or a stirrer or even an inkling or some statue come to life. Its life for- force blazes. You reach for your knife. Put it away. Lisa hisses. This guy gets offended very easily. Charon, and it can't be anyone else, is leaning against the timetable. 
He's tall, stick thin, and wearing black leather thongs and jeans about two sizes too big. He's grinning a very toothy grin. Hey, kids. He says. Beautiful day for it. His eyes are luminous, and you notice that Lissa's are too. It's as though they've decided to show their true aspects to each other, their power, and you're caught in the glow of all that psychic energy. You wonder if you shouldn't just slowly back away. Actually, not slowly, but then they're both looking at you, and you feel stuck in their gaze. Frozen, betrayed by some deep part of your back brain. Stupid back brain. This the new one? Karen says. Yes, not that you'd know it. Great from the get-go. You, you pump like a boss, eh? Karen says. <laughs> Lissa looks at him oddly. What? Karen says defensively. I'm trying to modernize my speech patterns. I've been around since before people started grinding wheat for bread. I used to go drinking with Orpheus. I to... <coughs> I taught Merlin how to trim his beard. I like to keep it fresh. You're doing it like a boss. You say. Karen looks at you flatly. I see what you mean. He mumbles something in what you imagine is ancient Greek, but it could be even older. So why are you here? Karen frowns. I have portents and such, the usual, and I thought I wouldn't mind a coffee too. You have time for a coffee? Lissa laughs. I never have time for a coffee, but I can make time. She turns that luminous and slightly deadly gaze back on you. So what do you think? Do you want the job? It's been a busy day. You've seen a city that you never expected, that you thought you understood, but didn't. And now it's blown right open. Is that what it's like every day? Lissa smiles. Sometimes it's worse. Sometimes it's really crazy. Really? You could always go for that accounting job in the city. I'm in. You say. Fancy joining us for a coffee then? Coffee with death and care on. How can you say no? No choice. No choice at all. I think I'm going to like working here. You say. The end. There you go. Woohoo! We survived our first day. Mm -hmm. We've met the guy who ferries people to the underworld. All right. Puts them in his little ferry, sends it across. It's a little bit disconcerting to think that I could get on a Brisbane ferry and end up in the underworld, to be honest. Wow. Mm -hmm. Don't use your go card. <laughs> That's right. If you don't use it, punish. Punish for not for not using the uh, <laughs> for not using the, uh, the 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 proper public uh, proper public transport there. <laughs> um, I uh, I um, actually love how we ended up going today. Like we hit all of my favorite parts of this story. Oh, cool! Mm -hmm. uh, I just I love the the. That choice of theirs that do you succumb to the the death well, hands that are breath. pulling you into the river <laughs> sticks? Uh, I wonder what the the text is for when you when you do choose foolishness here. Um, Go on. I'm trying to find it. Um, <laughs> I think I was just. Was that? It was, it was a, a little out for people that had had enough. I think, <laughs> like they 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 like they walked really far and they were like, "Look, I'm gonna tap I'm out." I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, okay. I hear. I have it here. Uh, so if you let it pull you in and the water starts looking very nice, the hand grabs you, pulls you in. You go under the water, and the last thing you see is a great big mouth closing over your head. The last thing you hear are the crunching close of a gigantic jaw. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I'm assuming then the Death Works novels um, encompass this whole war and kind of mini apocalypse that ends up happening in, in, in Brisbane that we now end up in the aftermath of it. Yes, yes. 
And um, so the, the first three books are about this uh, sort of apocalypse that's building. And the, the first one's about a, a regional ap apocalypse, which is sort of something that's just like, so I was writing a, about death, but I also was writing about like corporate culture and, um, <laughs> and industrial relations. That was when the work choices were, um, yeah, sort of kicking the gear. And, um, yeah, so it was a slight take on places that I'd worked at as well. But I, I wanted this kind of thing. So everything's regional and then there's conflict between various different regions and then there's a, there's a greater threat that sort of builds throughout the, the books. And, yeah, this is definitely the aftermath. Um, but, it, yeah, yeah. I look back at those books so fondly and just uh, the thing I really like about about this story is that you can, yeah, just sort of walk around in it a bit and it's, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun doing it. I, um, I, I think that um, it, it's really fun to, like, like read a book series that's set in a place that you know, right? Like that's like, mm. that's a bunch of fun. But then I really love like the thing that I keep um, harping on about to people when I talk to them about this kind of like adventure through a city is I'm like, oh, like you literally get to step into your favourite stories and like, no, pe you people literally get to step into your, your death works world, right? Which I just, I loved that so much. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a bunch of fun. It really, it really was, um, and and so so wall is so wall is essentially like so in, inklings are essentially like so if someone has a tattoo and they're a pomp, those tattoos can kind of come to life and help you in your death kind of they, things. They, they can, they can. Yeah, um, uh, they're usually not particularly helpful. Um, wall is I, I based wall on a uh, flatmate of mine whose name was Wall, um, and uh, yeah, it's. It's a little bit of a job, but uh, it was kind of what was a, a tattoo that uh, Steve I, I got, I think, when he was drunk. So um, it wasn't really, <laughs> it, it's come back to haunt him quite, quite literally. Um, can, can you explain to Brett what a yob or a, or a yobbo is? Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm trying to think of, a, of, of an equivalent. It, it, it's just a, I guess, a, a bit of a, a bit of a slob, a little bit wild. Um, yeah, nice. Likely yeah. to get into a fight. <laughs> Not super complimentary, but you know they do become good friends. He's, he's a girl with a heart of gold. So yeah. yeah. So so how um like so how do you normally like write or plot out your books? Did it end up being different? To, to do a kind of like a choose your own adventure? Like, did it change the way you normally write? Um, well, see, I, I'm, I'm a very scattered writer and I tend to write in a very kind of non-linear way. Um, so that that's sort of worked. I mean, it's a, a choose your own adventure is so different structurally because you, you're trying to think of all these different outcomes and then the way each of those scenes talk to each other so that it, it, it makes sense depending on, you know, whatever way you go, it should still kind of work together. So I, I guess a novel does that too. But, um, yeah, it, it, it is a different process. And I, I don't know, because I've only done it the once with this. Um, I mean, I, I did learn quite a bit, but it, its applicability to um, to novels is it, it, yeah, not, not quite there. Um <laughs> But it was it was so much fun. I, yeah, it um, I, I, there are, there are quite a few ending different endings for for this particular one. So if you guys are, are watching on the live stream or listening later in um in the the podcast, there are several different endings. One of which is like my my favorite ending, and I thought that this was where we had ended up this time around, but I don't want to say it because I don't want to ruin it. Um, mm. maybe I'll tell you guys like offline, <laughs> and I think that's, that's what great. I'm gonna that's do. Curious. Um, uh, but uh, if, if you do want to go and see it, if you go and download the Story City app, about.storycity.app, turn on spoiler mode, you can kind of dash about and make different choices to what we did and see kind of where you end up. Um, because this story happens equally on this side of the, the river, but also a whole other story happens on the other side of the river as well. So yes. 
quite quite a bit of fun. Um, but so you are at the moment delving your way into some children's books. So you've got like Mr. Unpoppable. Mr. Impoppable. Yes. yeah. Here's the <gasps> cup with the cover on there. So cute. Yeah, I've got all the merch. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a few other things that I can't talk about at the moment. Um, oh, mysterious. Yeah, but a lot of fun. And I'm looking at art in my in my office uh, from the, the project that I'm doing, which is, yeah, it's, it's really sort of kicked into gear this year. Um, and finishing up a novel. And I've got uh, The Stone Road, the audio book is coming out in July. There's a few things. And, yeah, the picture book is the thing I think I'm most looking forward to just because it's so much fun and... It was yeah. it was for your kids, was it? That was oh, well, I wrote it before I had kids. Oh. So that's how long. It's, my eldest is uh, four. Um, just it, it just took a long time to to sort of develop, but um, yeah, I mean, they, they definitely enjoy it. They know how. My daughter knows that she wants to suck up to me. Uh, just oh, Dad, can you read me, Mister Impossible? It's like okay, yes. How can I stay <laughs> mad at you? <laughs> But, yeah, so she that, knows that, how to manipulate you. Yes, <laughs> as children do very, very quickly. Can um, so you said you had the Korean version of one of your books behind us. Can you show us? Yeah, this is uh, so. This is the Giant of the Sea. There's a Chinese edition as well, but I don't actually have a copy of it. Um, obviously, I can't read Korean, but um, well, not obviously. But yeah, this uh, this came out well. The English version came out in 2020. Um, so Ravina Kai did the illustrations for this, which is absolutely brilliant. They're beautiful. Um, They're so it's pretty. It's my um, climate change uh, story about a giant and a rising sea. It was originally called The Giant and the Rising Sea, a giant and a, and a brave girl. Um, so it's quite dark. It has a, has a bit of a high body count. Um so it's nice to do a, do a, a ridiculous story, um, you know, a ridiculous picture book with uh, impoperable people and and no one dying, which is which is good. It's a little change, um, and yeah, I have another picture book that uh, is with my agent at the moment, which is uh, about the extinction event, the the dinosaur extinction event. So. That's nice. another high body count a picture book, so we'll see. It, it's pretty <laughs> grim. So um, it's, it's called Song of Stone, so we'll we'll see how that one goes. Kids um, need to know about death early, you know, yes. like, you know, just so that you make sure that they live life to the fullest. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, you know, I, I really feel that stories are a way of exploring difficult emotions in a safe space, so... It's it's better to explore these concepts, you know, fictionally, where they, they don't they can't hurt you as much, um, and you can talk about them, than you know just having to to face them initially in, in real life. If, if that makes sense, it's yeah. So, it helps you kind of imagine and pass through those emotions. In, in I suppose in the same way that your brain tries to make you imagine a whole bunch of scenarios so that you can be prepared. Absolutely. Is, Except this is this is one that's not your brain spiraling. It is it is you know someone guiding you gently through different mm. things. It, it's it's structured pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Trent, for joining us today. We honestly really appreciate it. Um, can you please let everybody know where they can find out more about you and your stuff online? Okay, well, probably my website is still the, the go-to, so that's www.trentjemison.com.au. Um, and then I go by Trentonomicon on Twitter and um, Instagram. Probably my Instagram account's my most active, where you see me take lots of photos of cranes and, and, and building sites and, and ibises. So the, the crane's the, 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 the machine and the ibis is the bird. Um <laughs> I find I have a small obsession with those, um, and to the point where my my daughter now points them out when when we're walking anywhere. Crane, I have to take a photo of it. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably Insta is probably the spot where I 
most comfortable. Um, Twitter's, we, we all know what Twitter's like now, so it's yeah, um, not so productive. But, um, yeah, so that's where you can find me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having uh, the the um, the the. I was going to say the gumption to join us. I, I I know that like you were too keen on the voice acting side of things. So like we really appreciate you being here and giving us context and a yeah. and a look into the beautiful Death Works uh, world that you created. Oh, thank you, Emily, and thank you, Brett. And I really enjoyed your reading because uh, I am one of these people that hates hearing their work read back to them because mm. all I hear is the clunk and it's like, oh, why did I repeat that word? All the things that I don't, uh, you know, you kind of suppress. And once you're through the editorial, it's like it's done. But, um, yeah, I, I, it really it was a, a, actually quite a pleasurable experience. So thank you very much. Excellent. I love it. Uh, so for those of you who are going to be tuning into Adventure Hour next week, um, we are going to be joined by the lovely Ben Crisp and Tom uh, Byrne, uh, who are going to be taking us on a tour around Adelaide with a broken time machine. So that is for our Adventure Hour next week. Um, we will probably be doing it again from StreamYard because this turned out so well. Um, and, uh, and for those of you you, as we said, who wanted to make different choices to what we did, get pulled into a river, uh, go searching for souls on the other side of the river, you can do so by downloading Story City at about.storycity.app and make different choices in spoiler mode if you don't live in Brisbane or go out into Brisbane yourself and pretend you are the apprentice of death. If you do, please go appropriately dressed and take lots of photos and share them with us. That would be great. Uh, we also have Creator uh, Labs every Monday at 4 p.m. here in North America. America or at 10 a.m. Australian time, where if you want to brainstorm a story, it does not have to be for Story City platform. We just enjoy brainstorming stories in general with wonderful creators, so please do join us. Otherwise, thank you very kindly, everyone, and we will see you next week. <laughs>